we praise God and we bear witness that there is only one God, the one true God who created all of us. We've been uh, fortunate to receive a message from God that is proven with tangible evidence, physical evidence, for the first time in history. Something that the world is going to recognize. Maybe it will take the world 20 years or 50 years. But we are fortunate to be the first pioneers who see this evidence and realize what God is telling us. There is a definite message from God to all of us giving us the most vital information that we need. And I will try to draw a picture of the whole thing in this khutbah to summarize for all of us the things that we've been witnessing for the last few years and also for our guests to catch up with this uh, a summary of the whole thing. God created us and He did not leave us without support. He didn't just leave us in the wild without direction or guidance. He, he uh, did quite a few things to help us attain our objective, which is one of the things that most people don't know. People in the street, they don't know what our objective is. So, God sent messages and messengers and told us exactly the things that we need. The first thing that God did was that uh, He gathered all of us, all the human beings who, who came to this earth and will come to this earth. And that was before creation of the heavens and the earth. And He had us witness, bear witness that He alone is our Lord. That we will worship God alone. God called all the people and said, Do you bear witness that I am your Lord? And we said, Yes. So, this constitutes natural instinct in each one of us. So each one of us comes to this world, we are born with a natural instinct to worship God alone and not to worship any or, or idolize anybody else. We are born, born with the knowledge and recognition that God is the one who created us, that He is the one who provides for us. He decides exactly how many dollars we're going to get. But God is the one who terminates our life when the specific time comes and God is the one who will resurrect us and God is the one who will put us in heaven or hell depending on our work. Therefore we must owe our allegiance to God alone and not to any creature. So this is one, one of the important things that God did for us. So what does the average human being need out there in the street, the average person? The most vital information. The first and foremost is, who are you? God tells us in this mathematically coded message, who we are. Ask the average person out there, who are you? And they will look in the mirror. Which is wrong. Because they think this is us. We come to realize now that each one of us consists of two entities, distinct entities, a body and a soul. And that the soul is the real person. That the body is not the person. The body is a garment that we are wearing. So that's who we are. How many people out there know this? They have to read God's message with the tangible physical evidence and realize who we are. Actually, this is an easy matter. You can logically prove it to anyone. They realize this body is, is not us. They realize there's a difference between a living person and a dead person. The dead person that is not moving still does not have a person in it, just a body, a garment. Something is gone. And this leads to some very important facts. One fact is, I gave my body breakfast, lunch and dinner yesterday. What did I give myself? And this makes us realize that the real person is probably starving. The real person needs breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And this is provided in the message that God sent to us. So this is the first 
one of the first items, who we are, and now we know. The second uh, point that the average person doesn't know out there is, uh, why are we here? What is the whole idea? Are we here to go to school and study hard and take tests? And uh, put up with parents and teachers and colleagues? And then get out and do some work, work hard from 8 to 5, go home, watch the TV, and then go to sleep, get up in the morning, go to work, back from work, watch the TV, sleep, get up in the morning, go to work. Is this what, I mean, is this what we're here for? What is the whole idea? Why are we here? And we know the answer from God's message that we are here to prepare for the real life, eternal life. We know that every one of us is going to leave here. We are here temporarily. Let us say for a hundred years. Just to be optimistic or pessimistic. Anyway you want to look at it. If we are here for a hundred years, we know that we're going to go on to something else. What is this something else? God tells us what it is, specifically, and what it looks like, and how to prepare for it. What do we need, is another question. What do we really need? The average person out there is taking care of his or her body. Whatever the body wants. The body wants a nice home. The body wants nice clothes. The body wants food. And they're, they're doing that. But they're totally neglecting the real person. So what do we need? God told us exactly what we need. God didn't just leave us without support. He gave us the natural instinct to worship Him. He told us who we are, why we are here, where we're going. What does it look on the other side? And, most importantly, how to attain perfect happiness, here and forever. This is the most elusive goal for the average person out there. Perfect happiness. As it turns out, there are lots of problems in this world. At home, husbands and wives are fighting. At work, colleagues are fighting with each other. They're jealous of each other. They don't like each other. Nations at war, there are lots of problems out there. So what? And everyone out there is looking for this most elusive objective. How can we attain perfect happiness here and forever? And God tells us exactly how in this message. We now know the secret of happiness because God told us what it is. Repent. We praise God and we bear witness that there is only one true God. The whole thing started billions of years ago when Satan thought that he is powerful enough to be a God besides God. So here is God with his angels and one of them saying, I can be a God too. So how do you prove him wrong or right? There's only one way to find out, by making him a God with a small g. And this is what God decided to do. So he gave Satan a dominion, the planet Earth, and constituents, the human beings, us. The human beings, we, we escaped, okay? Not us, but we escaped from Satan, God willing. But the human beings who choose Satan, as their God are, are, are Satan's constituents. So now we have a demonstration going on. And this is one of the things that God teaches us. Why we are here. There is Satan with a dominion, a piece of land, the planet Earth, and constituents, the humans who choose him. So every human being you look at is either in God's kingdom or in Satan's kingdom. And Satan is already proven to be incompetent. He should by now declare that he, he cannot be a God besides God. And if he doesn't know it by now, he will know it. Before the end of the, of the, of the demonstration, 
Satan will declare that yes, I cannot be a God. So this is what we're here for, to provide constituents for Satan. But the people who choose God as their God are not in Satan's kingdom. And this is where the distinction is being drawn between God's kingdom and Satan's kingdom. God's kingdom has no problems whatsoever. When we step out of God's kingdom, then problems begin. Satan's kingdom is full of problems, diseases, cancer, aid, accidents, personal problems. And these are non-existent in God's kingdom. And there's a mechanism for it that God gave us also in the message. What is the mechanism for attaining perfect happiness? <clears throat> As we've been, we've been talking about this, and we now know that the secret of perfect happiness is a well-developed and nourished soul. A well-developed and nourished person. Just as you give your body breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you're the real person. Your soul needs breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So God tells us exactly how to feed the real person. We are doing one of them right now. This is one of the major meals. It comes once a week. The Friday prayer. But the five daily contacts with God are the five daily meals for the person, for the soul, the real you. This is one way of attaining this perfect happiness. At the same time, you're preparing for the real life. Because that day is going to come when you begin the real life and you'll be assigned an eternal rank depending on your degree of development and growth. And you know the other things that are written in this brochure. The five daily contact prayers. The charity taken from your body to give to the poor. Your body loves money. The body wants money. So the charity is designed to take from this body and give away to the poor. Uh, fasting is designed to make you the boss over your body. A lot of people out there, most of them are enslaved to the body. Whatever the body wants, they go after it. The body wants food, okay. The body wants sex, okay. No bounds. The body wants clothes, yes sir. So, these commandments from God are designed to make us happy, to make us the boss over the body. So fasting, you tell your body you're not going to eat or drink until sunset in a specific region. And then the fifth is pilgrimage to commemorate Abraham's exemplary submission to God. So this in a nutshell, the picture of what God did to inform us. And now, like I said, we are fortunate that the information that comes to us from God is supported by the evidence that it is from God. There's so much information out there, you don't know which one is correct and which is man-made. Is it the Book of Mormons? Is it the Book of the Baha'is? Is it the Gospel? Is it the Bible? Is it the Torah? Is it the Psalms? What is it? So some of those are, are books of God and they, are, they have the mathematical code in them. And we are fortunate to have the complete and intact message from God that lets us have 100% confidence in it. أكمل الصلاة. الله أكبر. الله أكبر.